teammates. Welcome to The Well, the Live Well podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Jen Collings. And I'm Seth Christopher. Welcome to The Well. Ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, we're ready. Good morning, Seth. It's podcast day. How are you? I'm great. I love podcast day. It's mid-January. And we're talking this month all about making 2021 your year. So what have you done so far to make this your year? Well, I have set myself a couple of goals that I've revisited every day just to make sure that I'm, I'm still polishing up. Things like reading books, making sure that I am knowing when to turn it off and turn it on, things like that. So, so far, so good. It's early, but I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. Nice, nice. I've made some goals myself, which we'll, we'll talk about. Mine's a little bit about exercise, which is what we'll talk about today. And I like the goal of reading more. I might have to add that one to mine too. So, so let's get into it today. We're talking all about how to start an exercise program, how and why, why should we start one? And we have a guest with us who is going to really give us some great information and put things in perspective for us. Yes, we're going to spend the day talking about the benefits of exercise, extending the conversation beyond just the physical benefits, but also some of the emotional and psychological benefits. We are going to be very conscious of the hurdles and the challenges that we all face, um, but hopefully give everyone a chance to, to hear some really good advice from our guest about having a positive mindset and creating some some positive influences in your life and finding ways to be more physically active. Great. Well, let's dig in. What facts do you have for us today? All right, let's kick it off with some fast facts. Fast fact. Physical activity is arguably the most promising non-pharmacological, non-invasive and cost-effective method of health promotion. Yet According to data from the CDC, less than 25% of adults aged 18 and over meet the physical activity guidelines for both aerobic and muscle strengthening activity. Fast fact, no data here teammates, but we all know starting anything new can be hard. A lot of us know what we should do, right? We should exercise more. We should eat better. We should take better control of our life. Take our dog for more walks, get up earlier, etc. But it's just not that easy. Fast fact, habit development is not linear and the timeline to creating a new habit varies. A study published in the European Journal of Social Psychology found that forming a habit took anywhere from 18 to 254 days. The researchers examined what they described as automaticity and just in layman's term this is just the ability to do things automatically with a low level of cere cerebral tasking in this case they were looking at an individual's ability to sustain a physical activity related or diet related behavior over time and what they found was that most people came out of the gates early sound familiar but they were able to increase their behaviors up to a point of about 65 days. So the median here was it took about two months before they reached their peak of, hey, I'm doing the best that I can. But then guess what happens? They start to go on a decline. And eventually they ended up reverting back to some of those old habits. Fast fact, you can boost your chances of reaching your goals simply by writing them down and sharing with a friend. A study from 2015 showed that people who wrote down their goals and enlisted friends help through updates and support achieved their goals 75% of the time. People who simply thought about their goals, didn't enlist social support and didn't write them down, only achieved their goals approximately 50% of the time. So a pretty big difference there. You have slapped us with some pretty powerful facts. Yeah, the, the biggest thing here is, you know, we talk about trying to meet those percentages of physical activity guidelines recommended by the CDC and all the governing bodies for being physically active, right? Um, but it's just not that easy. 
And we always talk about doing a little bit more today than you did yesterday. And sometimes that doesn't actually meet the prescription, but it is improvement and hopefully can help to create some some sustainment for some of these healthy habits that are ho hopefully getting to some of these healthy behaviors and healthy outcomes. So I really like that this is the direction we've chosen to take on today's show, not just your normal, you know, go exercise, take the stairs, park further away. You know, we know that, we hear that, but more, let's dig deeper. Let's talk about, it's not easy. You have a goal, write it down, share it with a friend, and then season of grace takes over, right? So you want to do the best you can with what you have. And it's inevitable, it seems like every time I make a goal to do something, life happens. Somebody has, somebody gets sick or work gets busy or something happens. And the key is to plan that exercise and make a plan to meet your goal that works within the lifestyle framework, not when everything is going perfect. Well, and sometimes it's really just hard to see all of that into, uh, you know, hey, I want to walk more. Well, it's not just that easy. Um, it can be, but it does take a little bit of planning, a little bit of perspective. Um, and then just, you, know, you mentioned kind of giving yourself a little bit of grace too. It's incredible that you talked about it takes 18 to 254 days to create, that they found in the study to create a habit. So there was an old adage about what is it, 21 days to start a habit? This just blew that one out of the water, right? 254 days, that's a lot of consistency. Well, and it's, it's just not linear, right? So I think the big takeaway there is we may start with all of the best intentions in the world, see the improvements, see the payoff. You know, from, from January to February, I may have increased my physical activity, may, but guess what? This is just two months out of a 12 month year out of hopefully a hundred years of your life. It, it's, you're going to have fluctuations. You're going to go up and down. I think this just reinforces that sometimes we can, we can grab those habits. We can start to build them, but ultimately we peak, we come down, we go back up and so it's just understanding the long run almost like watching stocks like you don't watch them day to day because you're going to be you know you're going to be in for it like you're going to be on a roller coaster ride that's a great analogy all right let's do some myth busters what do you think about that as always let's bust some myths all right i have some fun ones myth number one exercise only benefits the body. So we all know the usual benefits of physical activity and exercise, right? Reduces your risk of heart disease, diabetes, stroke, certain cancers, helps with weight management, helps to build strong bones and decrease your risk of osteoporosis and lowers your risk of falls. However, did you also know there are additional benefits that can help your mood and one's feelings overall? Exercise can help with depression, Exercise may block negative thoughts or distract you from daily worries. It can help provide an opportunity for social contact, and we all need a little more social contact these days. It can improve your sleep and may change levels of chemicals in the brain, such as serotonin, your endorphins, and stress hormones. So exercise does the body and the mind a good thing. Sounds like a win-win to me. Absolutely. Myth number two, <clears throat> there isn't enough time in the week. All right, Seth, as personal trainers, you know that we have seen the recommendations for physical activity and exercise change over the years, right? I think one of the worst recommendations we did around 15 years ago was when we would recommend 60 to 90 minutes of activity daily. Do you remember talking to people about that? I do. It always, anytime we would we would bring that up and I would talk with a client about you need 60 to 90 minutes every day or most days of the week, I could see their face completely just go white and I could read their thoughts, say, I'll never get this done. I don't have another hour or more in my day. The new recommendations has taken this into account and the recommendations are 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity activity. So no more are we talking about daily exercise necessarily. It's getting 150 minutes of moderate exercise a week. With our guest, we're gonna dig deeper into this, but I think it's important to know the takeaway here is your exercise routine and the time you put in is very individual. 
If you want to do 30 minutes five days a week, that's great. If you want to do your 150 minutes on Saturday and Sunday, that's great. So it's all about working within each individual situation and making it work for you. And I think there's some advantage to with this looking at the week versus looking at the day because 60 to 90 minutes a day, that's I mean, that's pretty overwhelming you know, for, mm-hmm. for someone who might be wanting to get started and adding five minute increments, you know, that just seems almost like, hey, I'm wasting my time, I'm never gonna get there. And so it can create a, a sense of defeat before you even start the journey. Absolutely. Um, I, and looking at it over the week gives you some perspective over, okay, how does this fit into the bigger scheme of my life and the things that I'm trying to do this week? Where can I slide it in? So it's a little right. bit more flexible. And making it, like you said, part of your lifestyle. and every week is not necessarily the same. So it allows us flexibility to still be successful with our exercise program, but make it different week after week. So I love the new recommendations. I think that they provide a lot more um, individuality. Myth number three, gyms are too expensive. (laughs) So, I laugh because we're not really going to gyms right now (laughs) too much. Some I think are open, but hopefully they will come back. There are a lot of options when it comes to exercising within a facility or even at home. Here at Live Well, we've really taken a step back to try to look at exercise and facilities in a different way to provide you with opportunity for low cost options to get your classes and exercise done. So one option is ClassPass. So we partnered with them last year and we're partnering with them again. And this is an opportunity for you to take digital classes for free within your home or you can purchase credits and you can go to partnering facilities and you can take in-person classes. So in a variety of different ways for not a lot of cost. Another program that we're offering in 2021 is going to be our active and fit program. And this is an opportunity to pay a flat rate to be able to use gym facilities and a variety of them. So you don't have to just pay for one gym or several gyms. You can pay one rate to active and fit and then choose the gyms you want to go to. So it's not that it's, you know, there's options to work out for free. Gyms don't have to be mega expensive. We don't have to do the really high-end boutique facilities. We have options. And there are a lot of great resources there too. So I'm, I'm very happy that we're partnering with both ClassPass and Active and Fit to provide that service for, for all teammates. It's great. And I love the free option and the digital option at home. So if you're not able to get out, get out to the classes or to the gyms. So that wraps up our Mythbusters for today. All right. Well, I think now's a good time to, to bring on our guest, Erica. What do you think? I love it. Let's do it. All right. Erica Jansen is a certified clinical exercise physiologist through the American College of Sports Medicine. She is employed by Atrium Health as an exercise physiologist conducting stress tests with the Diagnostic Cardiology Department of the Sanger Heart and Vascular Institute. She received her Bachelor of Science degree from Towson University in Maryland with a major in exercise science and minor in psychology. She then obtained her Master's of Science degree in Health and Exercise Science from Wake Forest University, where she focused her studies on helping adults with chronic disease manage their conditions through lifestyle behavior modification. During her five-year tenure as a staff member working in the Health and Exercise Science Department at Wake Forest University, she held various research and clinical positions that helped individuals take back control of their health through healthy eating and physical activity. Although exercise prescription is her expertise, She has a deep understanding of behavior change theory, chronic disease management, and nutrition that allows her to counsel her patients in a more holistic way. Erica, welcome to The Well. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you invited me to be on. You know, you've been listening to the show, teammates. You know, we talk a lot about doing a little bit more today than you did yesterday, 
doing a little bit more tomorrow than you did today. Um, and but we also kind of base that up against the basic guidelines of physical activity. And Jen's a stickler on here on the well for talking about that 150 minutes of physical activity. You know what those basic guidelines are. What's the you know what are the national recommendations for physical activity? And maybe give us some examples of what that looks like. Sure. So um, as you mentioned, you know, and how Jen has said, um, the general guidelines, you know, by the American College of Sports Medicine, CDC, is for adults. Um, it's 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity, plus trying to get in two to three days a week of some type of strength training. Now that sounds all good, but I know I've worked with a lot of clients who are like, well, what does moderate intensity mean? What does vigorous intensity mean? Vigorous, you know, that moderate intensity is, you should just feel like you can't really hold a conversation very well if you were to be walking with someone. You're starting to sweat, starting to breathe more heavily. You feel like you're working. Um, where vigorous is, as you can probably guess, it's at a higher level than that, where you're really out of breath and feeling like you're getting your heart rate up. So, I know it's hard to piece that together, and of course, we don't have to be exact like, oh, no, I got 149 minutes this week. Okay, that's still pretty good um, to be able to do that, but the, it's really just about the intention behind what you're trying to do and, and getting out and getting moving, getting moving, whether it's with walking or if you like jogging, if you like swimming, dancing. Um, that's in terms of the general recommendations that's what we're looking for aerobic and then the strength training piece um you know that i think a lot of people that's kind of left to the wayside put on the back burner because uh, it's a little bit more daunting um but two to three days a week it, it can just be at home body weight exercises or if you have some resistance bands some people belong to a gym and of course that's what you think about with strength training um, but anything you can do is better than nothing at all I love that. And Erica, you said something that really resonates with us here at the well. You said to be intentional and you notice how you were going through and describing how to how to get to that. I'm, I'm doing air quotes like everyone can, can see this, but how to get to that <laughs> prescription of 150 minutes. And you said be intentional, but you also said doing activities you enjoy, you know, finding ways to incorporate that and getting credit for it. Right. Like so making sure you're checking those boxes, but you're doing it the way that that feels best for you. Um, and I think I also heard a little bit of a call out to, hey, let's let's check in with the professional from time to time, whether it's your you know, your provider here at Atrium Health or, you know, it's your clinical exercise physiologist. It's, you know, the the per professional that you've been attached to to help you get to your goal, um, you know, making sure that you've got some proper structure safely, but also that's appropriate for you. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I think one of the when I'm working with clients, one of the first questions I ask them, you know, if they're approaching me saying, I want to become more active, I want to exercise. One, I ask them, well, why? You know, why do you want to exercise? What's, what's your goal here? Um, what's your motivation? But also, when you think about exercising, what are you thinking of? What do you enjoy doing? And I've had some people just flat out say, I hate any type of exercise, so I don't know what to do. Um, but it really is so important to try and find something that you at least somewhat enjoy. I understand there are people out there that don't want to do anything physically active, but walking is one of the easiest, most accessible forms of exercise. Um, and I know with some people that I've worked with, they don't think that that counts. Um, and it absolutely does um, now. But it's about making that decision to get out, move your body, um, and you know what, anyone that I work with, if you make that, that plan and you get out, and even if it is just walking with your dog or walking with your kid while they're riding their bike, and you no, know, maybe you're not at that power walking level, but you're getting out, you're moving for 30 minutes. You know what, I, I praise anyone who, who gets out and does that, and I'm going to count that as that physical activity for the day, and something is better than nothing. But, you know, you've got to have the other side of we have to know what's realistic. Where's that realistic starting point? Is it going out for an hour walk for five days? No, if you haven't been doing anything previously. For most everyday people who don't really have much of a background in exercise or any experience, we gotta start with the basics, um, just for safety purposes and just to get you going um, without feeling overwhelmed and, you know, just, not in a comfortable spot. 
And Jen addressed this in the show a little bit earlier, and it, we just, it, and it sounds like you've got some uh, boots on the ground experience too, is people just not, not being realistic because they don't know exactly what they should be doing. Um, I think that that's a, a great place to start and being able to kind of level set and set your goals. You know, what, what other kinds of barriers do you see, you know, from, from people getting started and, you know, you have a background in clinical research where you actually, you know, were, were using physical activity as an outcome measure. Um, what are some things that you saw that people who were successful and could sustain a physical activity or an exercise program, what were the things that, that set them apart from the others? I mean, are there any common traits or characteristics that, that stand out that might be helpful in today's conversation? Absolutely. Um, and I will say, I mean, one major thing is we've got to have a plan. You've got to plan it, whether it's planning it with someone like an exercise physiologist or your doctor or a personal trainer or, you know, a friend that maybe has some experience that can help you. But you've got to have that plan. You've got to put it on your calendar. You know, I know I'm a person. I live by my calendar. I've got schedules. Um, and especially if you're a busy person, you've got to know exactly where you're going to go, what time you're going to do it, um, exactly what you're going to do, because in this day and age, all of us are go, 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 go. We're just trying to fill in so many things in our life. And we don't want to add extra thinking. And, you know, you finish work. You're like, well, what am I going to, you know, am I going to walk? Maybe, maybe I'll jog or oh, maybe I'll go to the gym or, you know, we don't need any extra effort <laughs> when it comes to trying to establish that routine and get it going. But that is something, I mean, hands down for every person, it really does lead to success in the short term, but also long term of just, you've got your plan, you know what you're doing, you know where you're going, you've got your, you know, exercise clothes packed in your trunk in the in the car, or it's set in your office right next to your door so you see it before you leave. So something I always encourage all my clients to do is write down your goal for the week and say, okay, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I am going to this location, I'm doing this, check the weather for the week. You know, if you're an out, outdoor exerciser, um, but having it written down because then it, it's like that accountability. It's written down. You see, okay, these are my goals, three days this week. Um, and, you know, if you if something comes up at work or you have an emergency that you can't do it that Wednesday, well, you know what, just change the calendar to the next day or, or one day over the weekend. You can kind of shift it around. If it's not written down, it's kind of like we can change our plan in our mind and if no one else knows what the plan is, they don't really know that we're changing it. So There's you kind no of start to give yourself a pass and like, oh, it's okay. I'll just do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. How many? I mean, I know I've done it. We've all been like, yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it this weekend. Um, but that, I mean, for sure, that's a major factor when trying to create a program and it doesn't even just have to be with physical activity if that's what you're trying to eat healthier or you're trying to you know trying to start some other type of health behavior um, that definitely leads to success so health behavior is just so interesting I mean, human behavior in general is so interesting but when we talk about trying to modify behavior for a health outcome you know, this is somewhere that you've been for most of your career and we're talking about starting, but it we know that it's not a, a point A to point B. It's not linear, right? Like I'm not getting to this the finish line. I'm I'm a I'm, it's a cycle in a way. Like I'm starting something, mm -hmm. I'm sticking to it. What tips or suggestions do you have for people that maybe not just starting, but you know, what are some tips for sustaining? It sounds like planning is a great way to do that. Is there anything else for people that might be ready to fall off the bandwagon or fall off the wagon? You know, what they can be. You know, focused on or tips that might help them to stay more uh, more diligent to their overall long-term plan. Yeah, um, and what I'm going to talk about, it, it can be applied to the beginning stages of starting the process of thinking about your goals and where you want to be and how your program is going to look, but also for the sustainability piece of it is something that I, I work I, with all my clients. I say, why are you wanting to exercise? Why is this something that's important to you now? Um, and so many people are like, well, I just, I want to exercise more. This is my goal. I want to exercise more. And I say, well, what does that mean to you? And why um, do you want to do this? And 
Um, for some people, it's managing their, they, you know, they were just diagnosed with diabetes or they have high blood pressure or they do want to lose some weight, um, whatever it might be. We have to think about why. Um, because I think that can get us started, but it can also keep us going long term because we have to think about if you're wanting to stop something, it's like, well, why am I doing this? I've got to kind of almost like give yourself a little pep talk of why you want to keep doing it. And um, a book, I mean, I am by no means connected with her, but a book that I read several years ago after hearing her speak at the American College of Sports Medicine National Conference. Um, it's called No Sweat, How the Simple Science of Motivation Can Bring You a Lifetime of Fitness. Um, it's by Michelle Seeger. She has her PhD and she studies behavior and physical activity. Um, and it's just a really nice book to kind of reframe your thinking about physical activity and what is it, what is it doing for you in your life. Um, but I would have my clients at the beginning of our program, write down why they are exercising. And after our program was six months, write down why they were exercising. And I'd show them six months later how their, um, you know, reasoning changed. And as I said, a lot of people, oh, I want to maintain my blood pressure. I want to decrease my blood sugar. Or I want to lose weight. And then by the end of the program, after they were exercising more, their reasons changed to, you know, it makes me feel good. I work better, you know, I'm, I'm a more patient parent at home. Um, I have more self-confidence, you know, things like that where you get into some of the reasonings that I explained earlier with, you know, wanting to lose weight or managing my blood pressure, managing my cholesterol. Those are kind of those what we call external motivators um, where the I want to feel good, I feel more confident, um, I have more energy, I sleep better. Those are those internal motivators that we can kind of get feedback each day. You know, after you exercise, sometimes you're just like, wow, I feel good. Or the next so day, great. you're like, ooh, I'm really energized. Those are the things, and trying to focus on those as your reasons can keep you going day to day. Because I always joke with my clients, I was like, can you tell after a workout that your cholesterol dropped? No, we, we can't feel that in our bloodstream. It'd be great if we could, but you don't get that immediate feedback. It might not be for six months to 12 months until you know if it's changed. And we live in the world of instant gratification. We want to get feedback right away, and we want to know that what we're doing is making a difference and purposeful. So trying to just challenge yourself to think about why you're doing things and maybe think about some of those internal forms of motivation. Can out there has a different reason. I, again, I've worked with people where they're like, well, I've got a four-year-old and I'm just trying to keep up with them. Like I want to be healthy to set a good example for them, or I'm trying to keep up with them at the park. I don't want to be out of breath. Um, or someone is like, well, I got to take care of a parent that's sick and I've got to, you know, there's just all different reasons and the reasons that I'm exercising is going to be different than the reason that someone else is exercising, but also the exact plan is going to be different. All of us have different histories with exercise, experiences, baseline fitness levels are going to impact what your plan looks like, um, what is your everyday schedule, and, you know, there's just so many interpersonal variables that have to be accounted for when you're creating a plan, but Something with your your plan, you know, I, I really emphasize making a plan, but I'm not saying you're making an exercise plan that you're going to be doing for six months. If you want to think that far in advance, by all means, but you almost need to think week to week. What does this week look like? Because if you're anything like me, every week looks totally different, and what worked this week might not work next week, and that I think can start to trigger some of those barriers and those kind of negative feelings of, oh, well, I didn't do it the same this week. But say you had a really stressful week or you were working long hours, I wouldn't expect you to do the same thing as you did last week. And so we almost need to reevaluate and restructure goals in some cases on a week to week basis um, and understanding that we're all human. You know, things pop up and we're not going to be perfect. I myself, again, I'm an exercise physiologist. I love exercising. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. There are days where I'm just tired and I need to give myself a break. So 
it's kind of like you got to have that middle ground between you don't want to be too lenient and say, oh, tomorrow, 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 because tomorrow's like next week, next month. But you don't want to be super rigid. You've got to have that middle ground where we're just realistic with what we can achieve. But we have to praise ourselves on the little things that we can do. You know, if you got out for a 20 minute walk, you know, that's great. That's fantastic. Maybe you wanted to go for 40 minutes. I know I'll give a personal anecdote the other other day. It was over the weekend. I have a 19 month old daughter and she loves going out in the stroller and I push her and I run with her. That was my plan. I had my running gear on, had the stroller set up. I brought her in the garage and said, Charlotte, we're going to go in the stroller. We're going to go for a run. Well, she saw her little radio flyer bike that we can push her in and she was holding her hands out i could not put her in that stroller she wasn't she having wanted it. to go on her bike so i can't run with the bike because it's not set up for that so instead of my ideal 30 40 minute run we went for a 30 40 minute walk and you know i just said well i'm still getting out i'm doing something it wasn't my plan but you know what? What am I going to do? I can't have a screaming child in a stroller strapped in. Well, and that's um, but you got to give yourself example. credit. Yeah, that's such a great example, Erica. Of I'd lo- I kind of I'm framing this in my mind. Win the week, like win the week. And you made a a great you gave a great story about how you made a pivot and how you made a change, but also how you accepted that. I think that that's sometimes the hardest thing because mm-hmm. you know if you're not winning the week and you're focused on winning the month. I mean, you know, and again, let's put air quotes up again. Winning the week is not losing 20 pounds in a week. It's again, you have to assume you're being realistic. But, you know, winning the week means that you're not so called up down the road that, oh, my gosh, I missed two workouts this week. My total six month goal is shot. There's no way I'm going to get there because of this. It it helps to kind of reframe it. And I love the way that you that you built in your own personal story there, because I think it's something we all identify with. You know, we feel like we're just not we we're almost inadequate because our expectations or outcomes, um, expectations are a little too high and unrealistic. Mm-hmm. So this is a great way to frame it. And I know people who even, to, to that point, Seth, I love how you said that win the week. I know people who, if their workout plan is, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they missed Wednesday, they just chuck the whole week, right? Well, I didn't get my whole time. I'll start over next week. And, you know, we I always counsel and caution people, no, 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 no let that go pick up that the next day and move on and then set your set your goals for the next week so yeah that's that's that kind of we just have to understand we're all human there are things that come up um and we could have all the best intentions but if you get a phone call that you've got a sick kid or you know it's whatever it might be that you have an emergency meeting for work i mean there's sometimes there, there's things that are out of our hands and so you just kind of have to accept like you know what today did not work out going to get back on the horse tomorrow and you know if you had a plan for five days during the week as you said jennifer it's like well if you get to that third day and you didn't do it and then you quit the rest of the week where you got two days but if you just didn't get that one day and you still did your other two and i got four i mean that's a huge hugely different outcome by the end of the week you've done four days rather than two um i'd take those four days any day absolutely i'd even say here's a cool trick and this is just me being on the fly here y'all but what instead of us have my calendar starting on Monday and I, I feel like I'm always falling off by Thursday. Why not just start my calendar on Thursday and see what happens? Like, hey, my work, my week doesn't really begin until then. It's a cool idea. Not. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> so much of it is just your own mindset. You know, you've got to get your mind before you even do anything physically. I mean, or any planning, you've got to get your mind right. Figuring out why and what is motivating you. Um, to make this change, and again, it can be physical activity, it can be any kind of health goal that you have, um, but you got to get get your mindset, and give yourself that pep talk um, before you even start acting on anything. Well, this just gives further support to what I like to talk about here on The Well is that, that first creation being the mental creation, and that's the plan. So I really appreciate you jumping in, Erica. This is a very complicated topic. I feel like we could spend an entire hour talking about it so we'll definitely have to revisit this as the year goes on so you can you can get us back on the wagon of exercise after january um but really appreciate <laughs> you taking the time uh to, to jump in and, and speak about something that's really important and 
isn't always the topic that we talk about when it comes to physical activity and, and, and being, you know, starting a program. It's usually about do it, do it now or don't do it at all. It's your, your approach is much different. It's, hey, let's let's get some structure. Let's start with why you're doing it and then let's figure out what's going to work based on your circumstance. So I, I love hearing that. So thank you so much for joining today. Oh, gosh, no problem at all. Like, um, but I appreciate just chiming in a little bit, giving some feedback. Hopefully it lets people think about their own approach to physical activity and other health goals in a slightly different way that can help them be successful long term. What a great conversation. Erica's just, you could just see it. She's just so full of energy and excitement about this topic and finding ways to just help people just get started, be healthy, you know, and being conscious of some of the challenges that we often overlook. She has a lot of passion and you can tell she's helped a lot of people in her past. And I love how she talks about finding the why, making it individualized, like really, really great interview today. What a perfect way to keep January rolling. Yes. Speaking of January, it's a busy month, Jen. What is happening with Live Well? So we've talked a little bit last time about some things that are coming up. Our um, incentives are open. The portal is live. So go on there. Do your health assessment first. Don't forget to complete that HRA. That'll get you through the gate, so to speak, uh, to working on the rest of your incentives. So don't wait. We do have three payouts. If you want to get your money all up front, go ahead and get started. Or you can do things throughout the year. That's one major thing we have. I want to talk just a minute briefly about something else that's coming up that doesn't necessarily have to do with Live Well, but does have to do with your co-host here. So I'm going to be having a pretty big surgery. I'm having spinal surgery and in mid-January and going to be going through kind of an extensive recovery process. So thought we would share that journey with our listeners. What are your thoughts oh. on that? Okay. I think that's, uh, let's do it. That's part of what we do here at The Well. I'll share a little bit as we go. When we start recording again in February, um, it may be a little bit of a topic. I do have an Instagram that I have started for anyone who wants to watch. I'm going to do a video diary of the recovery process. Um, that's going to be, it's at Jen's Journey on Instagram. Anyone is welcome to, to join. But I'm excited i guess kind of nervous it's going to be an interesting couple of months so lots of lots of things going through your head i know um you know we, our thoughts are with you we'll continue to support loyal listeners don't worry we will keep the well moving um yeah so and we talked about goals in the beginning one of my goals is actually going to be around physical activity and getting back into an exercise program so i will be having similar goals to our listeners of building an exercise program so it's going to be fun to catalog this all right great conversation today thank you so much for sharing that jen that um that's not easy so thank you uh but because we talked about so much today, maybe we should uh, do a little bit of a recap. Uh, what exactly did we learn today? We learned to plan your exercise, that this is one major key to success. Make a weekly goal as you build your habit. So making small goals can help you reach that larger goal. Success in building an exercise program, what does that look like? It looks like being intentional. Waking up every day and going, how can I be more active today than I was yesterday? Also, we learned how to make your program individual and personal and finding the, your why for the exercise program. And we recommend writing that down, sharing it with a friend that can lead to better success. The exercise guidelines, as we discussed, are 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity or 75 minutes a week of vigorous intensity plus two days of strength training. We learned walking is the easiest form of exercise and and it counts. It Walking to the mailbox counts. Walking around the neighborhood, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, that all of that movement counts. And finally, we learned that exercise can help your body, but can also improve your mental state. Not a whole lot to add there, Jen. Uh, just for teammates looking for more information on starting an exercise program, make sure you check out our exercise webinar um, that can be found on the Total Health Portal, but we'll also have it out there on the, the Live Well People Connect page as well.
and check in with a health coach if you need help making those goals. Remember, that's part of our incentive, but they're also there to really help you out. Our next podcast will be airing on January 21st, and we will continue with our theme of making 2021 your year. And we're going to have discussion on motivation during that podcast. Well, let's get motivated. Don't forget to visit the LiveWell website for more info and videos on exercising, working with a LiveWell health coach, and just general info on how you can live well right now. Our resources are listed at the end of the show, and we'll add links to the programs discussed today in the comments on our streams channel. Looking for more things live well? Not following our streams channel yet? Search The Well on streams in Office 365, or find us on the Live Well website to access all our content. Thanks for listening to The Well today. Stay safe. And live well.